welcome, I'm Nikki Sutton, and I usually help people realise the infinite nature of self and of reality, but at the moment I'm camping, so I thought I'd do a vlog for you, which is a bit of a change I know, but don't worry, it'll be the only one, this is not becoming a vlog channel, so don't worry about that. So I thought I'd just give you a little tour of where we're camping and our little tent and just take you camping with us really. Now I'm actually recording this intro on the third day and yesterday we went up Mount Snowdon, we climbed Mount Snowdon, so I'll show you that in a minute. And you might hear a bit of noise behind me because we are camping right next to a river on the campsite. We've got a really good spot here, right next to the river. It's pretty noisy and it is loud at night, but it's a wonderful sound. And there's lots of negative ions coming off this running water. So it's really, really grounding. We've been spending some time with bare feet as well, which is also very grounding. So actually watch my video on grounding and that'll tell you all about how that works. So I hope you enjoy my little vlog today, taking you camping with us. I'm here with my husband, Auntie. The kids are away at their dad's house for a week. So it's just me and him this week. And this is our humble tent here. There's the campsite all around. Here's our tent. Now it was raining quite a bit last night and it wouldn't be camping without a good bit of rain. So I'll just show you inside. So we've got loads of stuff in there, as you do. It's not the biggest tent in the world, but it's definitely decent. Oh, it's a bit of a mess in here. <laughs> so, but it's very, very cosy in there at night. And I do want to zip it up so that the bugs don't get in to the bedroom department there. So that's our humble little tent. But all these natural energies out here in nature are really, really rejuvenating. It's so important to connect with nature whenever you can do, to top up your vital energies, and that's what we're doing at the moment. So we were lucky enough to get a camping pitch right next to this lovely, lovely river. Isn't it beautiful? We're here in Wales, in Snowdonia National Park. in the path which is good because of the steep <laughs> parts it's nice to be able to get your breath back. We're expecting it to rain but we've got beautiful weather. Look at this. Wales is well known for sheep. Oh, look at these cute sheep. Do you like them, honey? So I'm just waiting because we've got about halfway up the mountain 
joined by a seagull actually. I think he wants a bit of my sandwich. Do you want some of my sandwich? Here we go. Oh, we missed it. Go on. Yeah, well done. Yeah, sorry, I haven't got a selfie stick on me, so that's why you've got this really close up video view here. <laughs> sorry about that. But, but yeah, I had a bit of trouble last night. There's one, I have one phobia that I still have. And that's a phobia of spiders. I've been working on it for a really long time. And of course, we have it's really the best thing to have a fear of spiders, is it? Because we're camping in a little tent. There's going to be spiders coming in. But I try and you know, zip this up in the bedroom. But last night I was woken up by a smile on my face. Now I try and face these things to try and get over them. And of course the last phobia I got in my face was I was like, I'm to make sure my sister's fine and smile. And from that point on I was afraid of spiders too. So I woke up and there was a big spider on my face. And I'm pretty sure, I know this sounds strange, but I think it was drinking from my eye. Anyway. So that was an experience. I think I think it's made me braver <laughs> with spiders. Trying to face phobias is a really good thing by exposing yourself to the source of the phobia to see that everything's okay. So even though it was on me and I thought it was drinking from my eye, um, I did survive and that's fine. So I'm a little bit concerned about getting back in the tent tonight. Oh, the seagull. Excuse me, <laughs> that was noisy. So I'm a bit concerned about getting back in the tent tonight, but um, I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> I got a bit close, it just flew right over my head. But in addition, working on the source of the phobia, thinking about where a phobia came from originally, and wondering if that was really valid, like seeing my sister screaming at a spider when I was little, I just took on her fear that she had was it really a valid fear that she had so hopefully as I continue to work on the phobia of spiders it will go away more and more. Leave me a comment on what you think about um, phobias and if you're facing them or if you just can't face them if it's too much. Oftentimes we, we don't want to face them because it's just too much, it's just too horrible. It's a bit windy now. But yes I'm very much enjoying the energies here in Wales. So. As I said, we're about halfway up the mountain. We've still got about an hour, hour and a half to go till we get to the top. So I'm really hoping that we, we do get there and back before it gets dark. We do have torches, so we'll see how we go. Another thing I've been thinking about recently is contemplating trees, contemplating being a tree. I mean, trees are timeless. They're so deeply rooted, they're very grounded, they're very calm and peaceful and tranquil. I think we can learn a lot from a tree. I've been observing lots of trees that we've been walking by and thinking, how can I become more like a tree? What can I learn from a tree? And perhaps that's something that you can contemplate as well. Here comes the seagull again. Perhaps something that that's something you can contemplate as well. What can you learn from a tree? Peacefulness, calmness, timelessness, always just there in the present moment. Trees don't have too much to worry about though, do they? But perhaps if we, if we empathised and became more like a tree, maybe we could feel better ourselves, more peacefulness in the present moment. Right, so I said to Auntie that I'd meet him a bit further along up the path, up the mountain, so I better go and see where he's got to now then. Walking barefoot as usual. <laughs> Did you find anything? Oh.
She is barefoot climbing still. Look how far we've come. It's a long way. Just this bit to go now. Don't want to walk too near the edge, to be honest. <laughs> We're going to be walking down in the dark. <laughs> it's quite eerie and misty. This mist has descended all around us. So we're going to be walking down in mist, I reckon. Should be exciting. it down before dark so we're gonna go and get something to eat now pretty tired this is what I love about Wales there's even sheep by the side of the road there's sheep everywhere Now we're just walking from our campsite to Bed Gellert, which is a nearby village. To see if we can get some lunch and maybe some gifts for the kids. Absolutely beautiful. It was really interesting yesterday when we were walking up Mount Snowdon how many people were stopping Auntie, my husband, because he was climbing the mountain in bare feet. Now, he often does this, and the reason why he's able to walk around in bare feet wherever, even if it's rough and stony ground, is because he's toughened up the soles of his feet, and it does happen over time. And as he commented, he was feeling like he'd been drawn up the mountain because he had a connection with the earth. He felt energetically drawn to walk up to the top. It was effectively, having bare feet on the ground, was effectively energising him to walk more easily. Now I've tried walking how he does and it is pretty painful for me because I haven't toughened up the soles of my feet like he has. But the reason for it is because when you make contact with the earth with bare feet, negative ions flow in through the soles of your feet and into your body. And negative ions mop up free radicals, which are harmful to your body, and therefore improving your immune system and reducing inflammation. So he gets a lot of grounding done by walking bare feet everywhere, especially up mountains. 
But I'll just add that he doesn't walk around bare feet all the time. <laughs> just on special occasions, if we're walking in the countryside in particular. Self mushroom hunting again. He's back. Did you find any mushrooms? No. There seems to be streams everywhere. It's lovely. Entering the village of Bedgalet now. Look at those mountains up there. We're just leaving Bed Gellert now. I got some gifts for the family and we had lunch at that place there with the white umbrellas. So off we go for a bit more walking. Okay, so this is the last day of our camping trip and I'm up here in front of a beautiful lake that we found here in Wales. I'm going to record in between gusts of wind because I know you can't hear me when the wind blows. But I was just thinking to myself, I was thinking about thought. Thinking about thought. Now oftentimes we learn that we want to try and minimise thought or perhaps not think so much. But that isn't really the case. There's different kinds of thoughts that we can have. A while ago I did a video on when your mind won't stop, when you're lost in thought, your mind's going round and round, swept up in thought. But that kind of thought is, is a persistent sort of involuntary thought, which is due to sort of healing that we need and emotions coming up and having anxiety about the future or feeling sad about the past, going over things more and more, over and over and over again. Now that kind of thought is the kind that we want to perhaps attempt to reduce through meditation. Or mindfulness as examples. But there's other kinds of thought too, the kinds of thought when we're contemplating something. I'm always contemplating things like I've been contemplating about thoughts. So when you have a topic in your mind and you're trying to figure things out, work things out, that's when, you know, thought is wonderful. We don't want to push away those thoughts. Contemplation is separate to meditation. We can sit and contemplate things. We can sit and try and figure things out, which is really important for our evolution. I hope you can hear me. It's pretty windy. So if I was to sit and contemplate about thought, this helps me to figure out about thoughts and decide for myself some thoughts are probably not so helpful if we're going round things over and over and over again in our minds, worrying about things. And then there's other types of thoughts which help us figure stuff out and to have revelation. So if I hadn't been contemplating that, I wouldn't have sort of come to that conclusion. Everything that's man-made in our reality came from a thought. Everything that's creative and and good and, and the things that we have achieved that are very positive they all came from a thought and if we weren't sitting thinking and contemplating these things and mulling them through and putting pen to paper those things would never have been thought up 
So when we learn about trying to reduce thoughts and minimize thoughts from meditation and mindfulness, it doesn't mean that we stop thinking. We can have mindfulness, being aware of the present moment, and, and that is being mindful of our thoughts as well, because when we have a thought come up, which inevitably does, we become mindful of it, observe it, and look at it, be aware of it, and think, well, what is that? And then we can allow it to float away if we wish, or we can remain in the thought and mull it over in a, in a gentle and non-judgmental way. And so as well as mindfulness, being mindful of the self in the present moment and how we feel, we can have meditation and then we can have contemplation, thinking things through, deciding things in a gentle, easy way and having innovation and revelations and new ideas. We can sit and quietly and gently think in that way. We don't need to force all thoughts away. Thoughts are not negative. Thoughts are not bad. But when they take us over and make us feel negative, fill us full of negative emotion or negative vibration, that's when we can work on the self, find out where all these, these excess thoughts, unhelpful thoughts are coming from, unhelpful emotions too, look back in time and see what it is that we need to try and heal or think what it is about the future that makes us anxious and try to heal that. I've got lots of videos on inner work and healing and ever-growing playlists. Quartz. Oh, there is a bit of quartz on it. Yeah, lovely. There are those who have seen fairies and elves in this part of the world, and I imagine that this is the kind of habitat that they would inhabit interdimensional beings that we can't see exist in these lands as well. They're just outside of the visible light spectrum. So we've been walking constantly for about four days. I've got muscles aching that I didn't even know existed. I've got butt ache as well. But we're definitely recharged with all the natural energies. Physically a bit tired out but recharged with all the natural energies from nature. Now this is a very special tree because Native American cultures say that when a tree grows outwards like that, that there's some sort of energy vortex in that place. So Auntie's just up there checking it out and seeing how it feels. It's not a tree that's fallen down, it's very much alive and growing horizontally. It's so incredibly beautiful. It really feeds the soul. Oh, he's off again. I think he's heading for the top.
you for coming camping with me. It's been really fun making a vlog for you. It's just a one-off as I said, because I just felt like doing something different. I never made a vlog before. At least I don't think I have. No, I don't think I have. So I thought that would be nice to do. So you've seen what I've got up to on my little camping holiday with my husband and uh, and it's been a pleasure so sending lots of love and all the best